<laughs> because I learned, I learned uh, about birth in an experiential way, uh, I, I got to see birth in a way that didn't, wasn't frightening. The first birth I saw was so, so beautiful. How many of you who are, let's say, midwives, saw, had the first birth you saw was totally beautiful? No blood. So, two. How many of you are midwives now? Okay, so, so now, how many of you saw uh, bloody and scary? Bloody and scary for the first birth. You know, cutting. Yeah, yeah. It can be. It can be frightening. The first time I saw a hospital birth, it was for a breech birth, because we brought the mom in, and they put her up in the. Um, they, call, they used to, you know, later they called them birthing beds, borrowing some language from, from hippies, but it looked like a torture rack, <laughs> you know, because they tied, they tied the ankles, they tied the arms, and then they came at her with a, a syringe that big to make a pudendal block to make an anesthesia because they thought you have to cut. Uh, I mean, they thought, oh, we don't want the head caught. And if her vagina is only like that, how are we going to get the head out? Well, same way you got the butt out. <laughs> it's about the same size. But they don't trust it, see? So, so they made her numb, and then they cut, 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 you know, right down to the, you know, to the anal sphincter. And so much blood, so much blood. I thought, that's a hemorrhage. You're not supposed to lose so much blood before the baby's born. Then the baby, which wasn't very big, came out all in one push. And, and then it took longer to sew her up than it did to, uh, for the baby to be pushed out. And I thought, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> um, and it was nice. It was better than uh, abdominal surgery. She did get well. She was happy that she had had the baby vaginally, but it did seem so unnecessary. Now, um, every other time, I had uh, the first doctor that helped me, uh, he said, here's an episiotomy. He says, you might need to make one sometime. So he described an episiotomy, and he said, You'll make, when the skin gets very, very white, here, here's the, the woman's vagina, and her bottom's here, and he said, if it gets really very, very white as the baby's head is pushing out, you could take your scissors and make a cut like that. Just snip the skin. Well, I thought that was an episiotomy. <laughs> and I'm, you know, why do that? I mean, it's not really one. It doesn't even bleed when you do that. That was the symbol of an episiotomy. Uh, so when I saw a real one, you know, like the one that had been done on me and all those women that had these forceps deliveries, I was really shocked. So, um, and it was amazing because years later when we made some videos of home births, and some were for breech births, a lot of them were first time mothers having a breech baby, we never made this cut. And I would show these videos to a room full of doctors, medical students, or uh, residents, and they would look, their eyes would look all excited, these young people. And then they would tell me afterwards they had never seen a birth where there wasn't first a cut. Every time it was done. And so, of course, you've never seen something, then your imagination thinks, oh, the result must have been far worse. That was the reason that the doctors in the United States said they made the cut, because the injury that would happen without it was so much worse. So that's what's happening now with, I think, induction in Sweden. Um, what would happen if we didn't induce? Well, you know what? Babies would come out, all the pregnancies would end with the woman going into labor. Uh, because labor, you know, pregnancies don't go on for, you know, 11 months, 12 months. They don't. Women go into labor. And um, we worked for many, many years 
with an idea that a 42-week pregnancy was absolutely normal. We, I only started to hear differently about 1990. That's when a 42-week pregnancy became abnormal, dangerous. And the idea started that, oh, the placenta just deteriorates and the poor baby can't get any oxygen and the baby won't be able to go to college or <laughs> stuff like that. And it used to be that it wasn't that you didn't put much belief, you didn't put much stock in the fact that the woman was even 42 weeks. Maybe you made a mistake because the due date estimation is, is a guess really. And the other thing is, who says that all women make their baby as fast as the other women? We know um, a lot of our um, babies that we've cared for have been Amish. You know, this big Amish community near us. And there are several families that we, we, where we did the mother's births, her sisters, and both of their daughters. And they're, 43 is normal for them. And when you examine the baby, the baby has all of the characteristics and signs of a 40-week baby. Some people take longer to make a 40-week baby than others. Just like some, some uh, adolescent boys get facial hair earlier than others. Why do we think in the womb that it's down to the day of how fine we cut it. I, to me, this is just not even science. Science should be, when you observe uh, nature, you should observe, you should observe it and not do all these different things that mess up your experiment. And so, it seems like there's a very big tendency in technological societies to intervene when it's not necessary to put women in unnatural positions, and also now uh, labor seems to be a race. Okay, go. Now you have the clock is ticking. You have to have the baby out. It used to be thought 18 hours was not a big deal. Now it's like oh, okay, 12. Okay, now now too long, eight. Uh, and we keep making women have to give birth faster and faster. That's ridiculous. So. How do we change? 